Okay, Lou Depot back again, and we're going to talk a little bit about why that baseboard doesn't get hot. And usually how a baseboard is ran off the boiler, this would be your first floor. We'll make this nice and simple. Basically, the plumber runs a pipe up into your baseboard, which is like this. And then back down out of the baseboard and to the boiler. Now that's a very, very simple one piece of baseboard zone. And basically what happens is the travel of water is this way. And it simply flows up. Sometimes with a circulator pump on it with the arrow going up. It pushes the water through and back into the baseboard. Back into the boiler. Hot water going up at 180 degrees and through the baseboard and down is going to give you heat, period. You have no choice. A lot of times what people will experience is some baseboards have heat and some don't. And more times than not, this is what happened, especially in older houses that were converted. Years ago, they wouldn't have baseboard. They'd have the floor... And they'd have these little convectors. And what the plumber did was he ran a large pipe along the basement ceiling and back to the boiler. But the convectors were tied in with half-inch monoflow tees. And they were half-inch pipes. And they simply ran to each convector. And what would happen was one convector would take up too much water to travel through the radiator and go back to the next one. By the time you got to the end of the house, the rooms would be cold. So while some water went up through the pipe, more water would go to the next one and to the next room and so on. So it didn't take 100% of the water. And that worked fine with convectors. But when people want to upgrade and get rid of those ugly radiators, they have somebody comes in that probably was cheap and didn't know what they were doing and put baseboard in. And now the baseboard, since the half-inch copper is sticking up for the convector and they thought that would work, they would just take the half-inch copper and they would tie it to the baseboard, either inside the baseboard or move it over. Now what you have is 90% of your 180 degree water traveling by the baseboard with maybe only 10% of it going up. That does not work. Baseboard needs... A hundred percent of the water going through it all the time. One hundred percent of the water has to go in, travel through it, and return back out of it. That's the only way you're going to get your 600 BTUs per foot, which was designed to heat the room. You're never going to get that out of those monoflow tees. So if they did that, and you have baseboard up there, and it's not getting warm... It's because somebody simply went off the two half inch monoflow tees. And there's a simple way of checking it. You can go downstairs and look and see if there's tees there. They should never be tees at baseboard. It should always be elbows. And if there are, you can remove them. And just cut out the whole middle piece of pipe. And that's it. Now you have two elbows. And you're done. And by the way... When they had those monoflow tees, there was not a purge on the boiler. So at one point when you do the baseboard, on the way down to the boiler, there has to be a valve that shuts the water flow off and a garden hose bib where you can actually screw a hose on and put it out a window. Because you have to shut the one valve and open the other to force the hot water up and push all the air out. And the air will come out that garden hose. And you run that for about 10 minutes. But that would be it. That would be how you would get the baseboard to get hot again. By either cutting those tees out. Or if they did do it on monoflow tees and you're not sure what's going on. You could simply cut a valve right there in the basement in the middle of the pipe and shut it off. That would cause the water to stop at the valve and go through and around. And you'd see that the, the, um, right, the baseboard would get hot instantly. Another scenario is radiators off a monoflow T, same thing, they got a monoflow T or just a T, and there's a radiator up here. 
Well, they'll put a bleeder on the radiator. Now, don't forget, the flow is this way. The water flow is this way. Now, when you do this, the water actually goes in here, travels through the radiator, heats the room, comes back down, and continues. Well, a lot of times people don't know what they're doing. They'll put a bleeder here to bleed the air out. The problem is... You're, what you're bleeding is the first section of the radiator, straight up and out the bleeder. The rest of this air in here cannot get out. It is stuck in there forever, and the radiator stays cool. Anytime you have a radiator on a floor, if the entranceway to the radiator is on the left, the water flow, the bleeder must be on the opposite side. It can't be on the same side as the entry. It has to be on the return side of the radiator. If you're unsure and you can't figure out which side is the return side, put a bleeder on both sides. This way you're sure. Because you're not going to get that air out of the opposite side. Now as the water's flowing and pushing, it's pushing the air out. With radiators, you can get away with it. You can have a monoflow system where some of the water goes by and the other water stays there. But with a baseboard, you need to cut that T out. It's got to be all elbows. The only way baseboard works is elbows. That's it. Elbow, elbow, elbow down, elbow into the next room, elbow up, elbow down, back to the boiler. And a purge at the boiler. You don't put bleeders on baseboard. It doesn't really work. The purge is at the boiler. That's how you purge them out. If you see someone putting bleeders on baseboard, they probably didn't know what they were doing. Or it was set up on monoflow tees like it shouldn't be, and they're trying like hell to get the air out. Sometimes it works like that. Sometimes it don't. And then the other thing is, they're not sure which side to put the bleeder on because they can't see the plumbing underneath. But that's basically why the baseboard doesn't get hot. Another reason why it may not get hot is you may have a leak if you're on a slab, if the house is on a slab and the boiler is on the same level, the, 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 the water could go out and go through some baseboard and then go under the floor and go through the next baseboard. Now, don't forget, I'm going to draw it a little better for you. This is ground level. Baseboard in one room, baseboard in another room, baseboard in another room. Well, the water's traveling 180 degrees through this baseboard, down under the concrete in the sand, through this baseboard, down under the concrete in the sand, but now there's a leak into this baseboard, and then back to the boiler. So you have your water flow, but this baseboard seems to always be cool. And that's because you're losing a lot of your water in the earth. Although it's traveling this way and heating these two, if you have a baseboard that's not getting hot and it's a loop system, there's a good chance there's a leak somewhere under the slab. Wouldn't happen in a house where there's a basement because if there's any plumbing, it's going to be dripping down the wall and you're going to see it. But that's the other scenario. So if there was old radiators in the house and they converted to baseboard, that's going to be the issue.